There was a husband that came home from work and uh, he went to sit down in his chair to have a rest when his wife came up behind him with a frying pan and smacked him in the head. <laughs> he turned around and he said, what did you do that for? And she said, I found this piece of paper with Mary Lou written on it in your pocket. And he's like, oh honey, remember a couple weeks ago when I went to the horse races that was the horse I was betting on. And she was like, oh, sorry. About three days later, he came home, regular routine, went over to sit down in his easy chair to take a rest from the day's work, and smack, she came up behind him with a frying pan, hit him again. And he turned around, he's like, now what'd you do that for again? She said, your horse called. <laughs> Well, today we are starting a series inspired by Joel Osteen's latest book, Blessed in the Darkness. And I appreciate the relationship that Beth and I have been privileged to have with, with Joel and Victoria, I think, over the last uh, at least 10 years. And uh, he's been such a blessing to us as well as our church and how many know that when you got company like Joel and Victoria Osteen, you are in good company. You are favored of the Lord. And, uh, and I just think the relationships like that, that this church has, says a lot about our future and that our future is bright. God's doing something in this place. And so I just, I just really appreciate that. And I know that in this series, I'm, I'm just praying that that God will help you to see that his plan for you is always being worked out for your good, that you're going to emerge stronger, you're going to choose fear or choose faith over fear, you're going to be the overcomer that God's called you to be, you're going to see God and his light shine in to the dark places of your life and you're just going to know that that you are going to accomplish everything that God's called you to accomplish. There is no devil, no devil that can step in your way and stop you. Get that in your head right now, that nothing can hold you back from accomplishing what God wants you to accomplish. Now, maybe there's some things that you want to do that God's got better ideas you know, there's a lot of things that I thought, man, this was just God. But when God just turned me around and got me going in the direction that I was supposed to go, I'm like, man, his dream for my life was so much better than my own dream for my life. And so I'm just believing that God will shine his light in on your life. You'll be able to see a lot better, maybe even in the dark spots of your life that, that you might possibly be going through right now. Everybody here today should know that God's primary desire is to bring blessing into your life. As a matter of fact, especially in the times that you face darkness, that you face enemies, that you face difficulties, that's when God is most real to us. Come on, parents, you know, you got kids. I mean, when, you know, when they're sad, you know, I, I'll tell you, I can pull Eldon out of his sadness at any time just by buying him a Nerf gun. <laughs> and it'll last every bit of five to 10 minutes and he's totally fine. And then he moves on to something else. But I love to do that. I, I love to bless my kids. 
And, and God is the same way with us. So how much more does our heavenly father want to bring blessing into our life if that's what an earthly father does? And that's exactly what the scripture says. God is jealous for your blessing. He is jealous to see you do well. Deuteronomy 28, two, two through seven says this. You will experience all these blessings is if you obey the Lord your God, your towns and your fields will be blessed, your children and your crops will be blessed, the offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed, your fruit baskets and your breadboards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. Hold, hold on now. I, we like to stay in the blessing, don't we? But now he's saying, the Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven. I love that. He's not promising that we won't have enemies. He's not promising that we won't have battles. But what he is promising is that he is going to come to help, and he's going to be the one to help you become victorious over anything that the enemy brings against you. You know what happens to us a lot of times? We get blessed, and we see things that are around us, and we're like, whoa, man, God is favoring me, and he is blessing me. And, and, and then all of a sudden, if what we see around us starts to go, and all of a sudden there's an attack on our lives... We're like, where did God go? You know what? That's the time when you need to say, God's still here. God is still the one that wants to bring victory in my life over my enemies. In my darkest hour, he wants to help me and cause my enemies to scatter. Though they come against me one way, God's going to run them off seven different ways. I guess he's just going to chop him up and send him in all different directions. God is going to make sure that his children are always victorious. I, I, I want you to listen to this. This is so, so important. First and foremost, the blessings of God are not defined by the external, but by the internal. It's not defined by the things that you see happening around you, but what you know is going on on the inside of you. So when things are not going so well on the external, you won't end up, if you're looking at the internal, the internal blessing of God, you won't be listening to the enemy when he says, look what's happened around you. Look what that person's saying. Look what they did to you. Look what's happening in your finances. Look what's happening in your marriage. Look what's going on in your children's life. Look what's going on at your work. Listen, the enemy, the only thing that he sees is what's going on around you. He cannot see what's going on inside of you. Why? Because that's personal between you and the Lord. Jesus lives on the inside of you. That's where your victory is. Your victory is not in external things. External things, they'll come and they'll go. But what is internal is always there. The blessing of Jesus, the life of Jesus. It's real and you need to know that anytime things are not going well on the external, you look to the internal. And you say, devil, you don't know my God. You don't know what he's saying to me. You don't, listen, I, I might be going through a dark time in my life, but you just watch me when I come out of this. I'll be better than I ever was before. I'll be more blessed. You just watch my marriage when it comes out the other side. I'm hanging on to God. He wants my marriage blessed. He wants my children blessed. But you only see what's happening just for a moment. I'll tell you what God's telling me from the inside, that he's going to cause me to be victorious in every dark moment that I face. The blessing of God is internal, not external. The house, the car, 
the new clothes, maybe the spouse you were praying for. Listen, all of those things are external, and God does bring blessing in that. But it is a result of the blessing that is internal. You know, some people get the new house that they prayed for, then there's no peace in it. See, that comes from the inside. Somebody got the new car and the excitement wore off really quick, but the payments kept on coming. We call them things blessings. Anybody knows you buy a car, the day you take it off a lot, you just lost thousands of dollars. And we walk around and say, the Lord bless me with a brand new car. It's like, what's wrong with God? I mean, if you sit down with your account and he's like, you're not blessed. You just bought a new car. You're losing money already. <laughs> you bought all them new clothes at the beginning of the year. Now you don't fit in them. And you call out a blessing. You were blessed with a brand new spouse. You know, you prayed for God, give me a wife. And God gave you a beautiful wife. And three days later, you want to trade her in. <laughs> the real blessing is internal, not external. You'd see everything different on the exterior if you knew that your real blessing was interior. Romans 8 and verse 11 says, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead drives around in your car. No, lives in you. Lives in you. You know what that tells me? Nothing that's happening around me can change the living God that breathes life into me on the inside. Nothing can change that. Nothing can change that every day I wake up and I am alive in Jesus. Things may look different around me, but I am alive in Jesus. I don't feel alive, but this thing is not about feeling. It's not about how I feel. It's about what I know. You say, well, it's supposed to be the joy of the Lord is my strength. Listen, joy isn't, that's not joy. Joy isn't what you feel. Joy is something that you know. Joy is something that'll get you through the valley. Joy is something that'll get you through the battle. Joy is something that'll help you through the dark times of your life. Why? Because you know Jesus lives on the inside of you and there is breathing life, life-giving breath that just causes you to conquer every one of the enemies that come against you. Oh, it's what I call a powerful blessing on the inside. See, you're not shipwrecked when you lose your house or your car or your job or you go through a divorce. It's when you lose what's on the inside of you. And the enemy can only fight at you from external things, but he can't touch what's on the inside. You would have to choose to give up that life that is flowing in the veins of your body, you'd have to choose to say, I'm not victorious. I'm not going to win this battle because the enemy can only accuse you and bring an attack against you by the external things. What's going on in your heart that's between you and God. Paul says in Philippians 4, 10 through 13, how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content in whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation whether it is with a full stomach or an empty, with plenty or little, for I can do, there it is, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Sometimes we think that scripture is only applicable to the external things, to all the things that are good in life, but I'm gonna tell you that scripture is a whole lot 
more for the battles that you face in life, for the dark times that you face in life. That's when Paul had to stand up. Listen, I'm telling you what, when, you got, when the refrigerator is full, you have nothing to need. And when, the, when there's nothing in there, and when uh, something happens with your work or something like that, you're praying to God, aren't you? That's when you have need. That's when you have to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because that's when we get close to God. Listen, don't run from God when those things happen. You get close to God. Get close to what's going on on the inside of you. The life-giving flow, the breath of God that is causing you to be an overcomer. Paul says sometimes, you know, I've got money. And he's saying sometimes I don't. But I can... I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He says, I've got strength to live through it all because Jesus is living on the inside of me. Man, he knew he had a strength. Strength shows up when you need it. You know, this past week we went down to a a men's conference down at Wave Church. And I'm going to tell you, we took along like 40 men. 40 men. Men. We took men with us, and, uh, and we were down there. And, 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 and of course, you know, there was like, there was like six, seven, eight hundred men. I don't know how many were there, but it was, a, it was a large crowd. And there was just churches from all over the U.S. that were there. And it was just, it was a powerful time. But we were the largest church. We had the most men there and, uh, of any one church. And, and so when they mentioned the church airborne, And they said, what a cool name that is. Our men just lit up. We had them in this section. They were in the middle section. They were over here on the other side. We were kind of spread out. But when that roar came from the airborne church men, it was like we were special ops forces or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, we were like the SEAL team of airborne church. And that roar just lit up that... The guy, that, the guy that was up on the stage, it just kind of like set him back. He was like, wow. As a matter of fact, one pastor told me after that, he said, I was sitting on the front row and I heard that roar and I thought, my God, where are they? They're everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> and when I heard that roar, I, I didn't actually even shout out. And, uh, and I, I, was just, I was stunned by it myself. I was like, and it did something in me. I mean, there was a strength that, was, that, that came inside of me that I thought, man, Our church is full of great men. I mean, they are a special force. They they are a SEAL team and Jesus in the spirit. And and just to hear that roar, I thought, thank God for my men. As a matter of fact, I had this thought. I felt so strong with my 40 men. I felt like if there was any other church, you want to stand up and try to take on my men. Matter of fact, I felt like I could take on all 600 of them. So just bring them on, right guys? We are stronger together than we are apart. I know there's something that you felt when you walked in here this morning. You walked in where there were other people coming in for the purpose to lift up the name of Jesus, to receive from Jesus, and to take Jesus with us when we leave this place. I'm going to tell you, that recipe makes this place something different than any other place. And when you come into it, you just know that you've walked in to a place of strength. And something awakens inside of you. I want to tell you, you were in the right place today. You didn't just answer an invitation or thought, well, I'll try it out this one time. No, you are here by divine appointment. God's been waiting for you and God worked through people to get you here. This is a special place. It's a special time. And I'm expecting something extraordinary to happen in your life. You are in the right place. Psalms 84 and verse 4 says this. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Dwell means this, to keep on coming back. Dwell means this is my home. This is what I do every week. And if, you're, if, if, if you've come in to this place today and you're trying it out, you know what? I invite you to keep coming back. Because so there's a promise right here that says, blessed are those who dwell 
in your house. I mean, why wouldn't you want to keep coming back and get those kind of free blessings? And so there's something special that happens when we come into the house of worship. And I know when we probably started singing today, you were feeling something in your heart. I know I was. I was feeling something going on. And maybe you don't know what that was. Maybe you just started to cry. People tell me all the time, I just started to cry. I just, I, I just didn't know. I'll tell you what that is. That's the spirit of God moving in. That's the spirit of God saying, hello. Hey, I'd just like to come into your life. I'd like to help you. I see some things in your life that I could change. And all of a sudden, you just feel a breaking down of your spirit. And there's a transaction that is happening. And that's just God by his spirit saying that he wants to help. And so I just encourage you, if that's happening to you, if that happened to you today or in another service, just let the Lord into your life. Say, God, speak to me. What is it that you're trying to say to me today? What, 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 what kind of light would you want to shine in my darkness that helps me to see different than what I've been always seeing this? I'm telling you, God will show you a better way. Just let him come in. Psalms 92 and verse 13 says, those who were planted in the house of the Lord, that's right here, shall flourish in the courts of our God. That's why it's important to be here. That's why we're so excited that you are here. I got to tell you, I have so much gratitude for this house of worship. I love this place. I come here every day. Every day. Josh, you come here every day. You better. <laughs> we pay him to come. You, no, let me tell you. Everybody on our staff, they love to come here. That's what's so cool about seeing them every day because everybody here wants to be here. And you know what? If, some, if, if, if there comes a day that somebody doesn't want to be here, Andrea will tell me. And she'll let me know. But you know what? People just love to be here in the house of the Lord, I have so much gratitude. Gratitude. Say that word with me, gratitude. gratitude. Gratitude for this special place. Supernatural things happen here. Last night, I was just turning on some worship music, knowing what was ahead of me on Sunday morning, and I just began to worship, and I started to pray. And I just began to visualize everybody that is walking through those doors. And I just started praying for people. God would encourage their hearts. That God would help them find renewed hope. And that you would be able to feel the love of Jesus in the house of God. I sense that God wants to tell us today that gratitude is the key that gets the attention of heaven. Gratitude. Gratitude is so important to us. Having a spirit of appreciation, it is so important. Gratitude will get the attention of heaven. You know, I've heard people say, God's not listening to me. I, I mean, believers that have been, been in this thing for a long time. I've heard, I've heard people, and I have to arrest this, and I'll do it corporately today because this is the attack of the enemy is to get you into a place that is a lack of faith where you're making requests before the Lord in a way that is a lack of faith. And, and I, I, I've watched people where they, they just have this lack of appreciation or this lack of faith and they, and they almost start to hide from God. And you know what they do when they start hiding from God? They turn to people. And they get on Facebook. And they start sending out prayer requests. Well, I just, you just have no idea how bad my situation is. It's just so difficult. I'm not going to get through this. I just can't take this anymore. Will you please pray for me? Listen, you know what you're doing? You're turning to Facebook. You're not turning to God. And every time that we start writing something in there that says we're not going to make it, you know what we're doing? We're insulting God. Yeah, we're saying, God, we can't make it. I, I know you're on the inside of me, but I ain't making it here. Just, you know, memo, Facebook, not making it. 
And so we, we start to, to post this stuff. I, I want to remind you that while you're there on Facebook, God's not on Facebook. I just want you to know that. Neither is your pastor, so you won't get my attention being on Facebook because I'm not on Facebook. I guess it's good for some people, but uh, just not for me. I don't, am I on Facebook? I don't even like to watch her Facebook. Um, <laughs> but I think it can be good. I'm not, I'm not putting it down, but I am putting this part of it down. Because I'm going to tell you, there, there's thousands of people that uh, you, start, you start putting negative things on your Facebook. It's like everybody's listening. Oh, I agree with you. Yeah, that's difficult. Oh, oh boy, that's tough. You know, I don't want those kind of people praying for me. I don't want somebody praying for me that agrees with me. We can't make it. That we ain't going to get out of this. We're all doomed. Let's pray. God ain't listening. He, he doesn't log into that stuff, folks. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't have a username for that. He doesn't even pay any attention to that. Oh, this is the one that I like, where people just, they come out from hiding every once in a while, and they look up, and they actually go direct to God instead of Facebook, and they say, God, can't you see what I'm going through? God, look. Look at my marriage. Look at my car. My car, I'm three months behind payments on the thing. It needs an oil check. I can't even afford the... Look, God. Look at my job. Look at the people I... God, look at the people I have to deal with. And I think this, you are saying to the God of heaven that gave you your sight to look, there's nothing wrong with his looker. His looker's just fine. He sees what's going on. He knows what's happening with you. You don't have to say, God, look. You know what you should do? Hebrews chapter four and verse two says that the word did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith. When you mix it with, I can't make it, this is terrible, you have no idea. Listen, I'm telling you, but if you can turn that around and you can say, my husband is sick, this is what he's going through. My, my, my job, I just lost my job yesterday, but I know this, that God's got something else for me. Will you pray with me that God will send me that new job? See, you mix it, you mix it up with faith and you'll get there a whole lot quicker. Now, I want to tell you when you start doing that, there'll be a lot less people respond to you because people are attracted to negativity. People are attracted to those that doubt and have no faith, or people that are talking about other people and putting other people down. I mean, you, know, you, can, get, you can get thousands of friends. And let me just submit to you, if you think that you, it's so wonderful that you have a thousand friends on Facebook, you know what? The majority of them are probably your accuser. As a matter of fact, you don't even want to look at the statistics that Facebook themselves put out on their own selves. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like a warning. Be careful, scammers out there. And you know what? The devil will scam you into negativity to the point that you'll turn to Facebook, you'll put down posts, you'll, you'll, you'll take all kinds of time to describe your life except for to take what is wrong in your life and the darkness in your life, mix it up with faith, add people of prayer, add people from the church that know how to pray through and get through to God, and then you will get the attention of heaven. But you've got to have gratitude. Yeah. This is a difficult time, God, but I've watched you bring me through before. And I'm thanking you for what I've already been through. I'm thanking you for what you've brought me out of. I'm thanking you for the victories of the past. And God, I know there's another one in you for me. And you mix that with faith and then God and all of heaven begins to listen. Gratitude will get the attention of God. Look at this definition, gratitude. It's the quality of being thankful. But I like this one. Readiness to show appreciation. Most times when you're thankful, you don't feel like it. But see, being thankful has nothing to do with your feelings. Being thankful is a spirit of readiness. Like, I'm going to get ready, prepare myself, work this thing out, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to be thankful. This morning when I came into church, 
I haven't been feeling well for, for several days and I'm just trying to, trying to get over this and I just, uh, I, I, I didn't want to hear myself talk about how I don't feel well, so I, I want to try to talk my way out of this if I can. And it almost worked last, last service. And I was like, oh God, we almost made it. One more service, I'll make it the next one. That, that's what you do. You just keep going. You keep being thankful. You keep showing gratitude. You keep mixing your request with faith. But I, but I had this thought when I walked in, knowing that I was going to speak on this, I thought, I need, to be, I need to have gratitude. I need more gratitude in my life. And you know why I need more gratitude? Because I want more attention of Jesus. I want more of him in my life when I'm making requests and I want him responding more. So I came in, I came through this back door and I started to walk uh, toward the green room where I always go. And just as I was walking there, I, I smelt something and it wasn't coming from the direction that I was going. So what do you do when you know something good is happening in another room? I'm not going to the green room today. So I went to the creative arts room. And you know what they had? Oh, these wonderful, fresh, blueberry muffins. Oh, they were awesome. I'm gonna tell you, I had one of them and instantly I already started to feel better. And, and I just have so much gratitude. And you know what my gratitude is? It's not for the muffin, but the person that made it. I'm so thankful for Brandy Collis. She just loves to bless people. She loves to cook. And, and so I came out of that room. Then I came over uh, to the green room. And the first person I saw was Craig. And, uh, and, and, and Craig is just, he's right there waiting. The first thing is, what do you need? He wants to take care of any of my requests. You say, whoa, do them people serve you like that back there? You better believe it. Man, them guys are awesome. Yeah. They do everything. And, and you know what their purpose is? They've been trained to take Pastor Kevin's attention off from anything that might be going on in this building so he can keep focused on the message that he's going to deliver to a thousand people. That's their primary purpose. And I just like, man, I'm just so thankful for Craig and how he just meets any need. Like, like he can see it coming in advance and, and he's just, he's just taking care of that. And I, I think that's just so awesome. And Nate Stevens, he's back there a lot and he does the exact same thing. And uh, I, I usually I'm, I'm back there and I'm talking to people the last minute, but I still get out of here pretty quickly. Why? Because somebody has started up my vehicle. They've gathered my notebooks and my phone and my keys and they go out and they start my vehicle and I, boom, I get, you say, whoa, I want that kind of job. Well, why don't you pray for it? You could pray for it. You could believe for it. You know what? You could train your children how to do that. Good luck. Yeah, I was waiting for that. Good luck. <laughs> but I was just so thankful. I'm so thankful for people and the blessing that they bring upon my life. I don't have time to think about being a little under the weather today. I got so much to be thankful for. And I'm going to tell you what, healing from heaven will come a lot quicker through gratitude. So let's just be thankful. Let's be thankful. Let's just ask God to continue to bring gratitude in our lives. Is Daniel Kisner here? Is he sitting at Daniel? I'm so thankful for you. I was watching him down at the men's conference, just loving on God. I was sitting about four rows behind him. Probably one of the most beautiful sights that I've seen, him and Matt Reynolds, just worshiping God, thinking what them guys have been through. And I know that there probably isn't a person in my life right now that has more gratitude than Daniel Kisner. After what he's been through and, and, and the addiction that he had to alcohol, but he said, I'm going to fix this. The devil's not going to do this to me anymore. My family's going to be the family that God's called me to be. We're not going to separate. We're going to stay together. We've got a good thing going. We just need to bring God into my life and into this addiction. And, and, uh, and, and so he, he went away to a rehab facility while he was there. I was thinking the whole time, because I was asking people, because I'd never worked with Daniel before. And, uh, but I heard he had some gifts, and we were right in the middle of a building project. 
And I was saying, hey, do you think I ought to hire him on? Man, I'm telling you what, the minute he got out of that rehab facility, I said, you know what? I'm not only going to hire him to be able to do things for us to build God's church, but I'm just going to give him some protection for a little while, and I'm not letting the enemy get another one of mine. That's just not going to happen. So we've had a lot of conversations. And I've got to tell you, I, I know this church has been a blessing to you, Daniel, but my goodness, you have no idea the gratitude and the appreciation that you've had for people that have loved on you and talked to you and supported you and cheered you on. The gratitude that you have given back has blessed me so much. I love to be around him. I just love being around him. I'm going to tell you, folks, you get some gratitude. Not only will people want to be around you, you'll get the attention of heaven. You'll bring heaven down into your life. You'll bring heaven into your marriage. Don't, don't complain about it. Ask God to come into it. Ask God to bring freedom to you. And Daniel, I just want to say publicly before everybody today that you have just begun to change people's lives. There's so much inside of you that you have to say and you articulate it very well. The times that I've asked you questions, I just thought, everybody needs to hear this. There is a leader inside of you that wants to rescue other people that have been through the same thing that you've been through. Listen, God didn't make it happen. The devil makes those things happen. But God's the one that takes what makes happen and turns it around for his good. There's a lot of good coming in your future, young man. In Jesus' name, we're believing it. Let me just finish up here. That's why we have people in the parking lot that park you. You say, well, it's just to find a parking spot. No, no, no. It's to get you ready to come in and be in the presence of the Lord. They appreciate what Jesus does here every single week. So they're going to make sure that you get a parking space and you can move quickly right toward the building. You know what? If you come, into this, you come to this building and you approach it grumpy, that's why we have greeters. They're smiling at you. They're, they're trying to take the grumpy out of you. Why? Because they're preparing you for worship. They're trying to cast their gratitude on you. Do you know that we have people that watch the greeters to make sure that they're happy while they're looking at you? We're always holding one another accountable. Why? Because we want to be the best we can be with a spirit of appreciation that we don't miss anything that God has for us. Maybe you come in this place a little bit tired. That's why we have an espresso bar. Go ahead, jack yourself up a little bit. Wake up. Be ready for worship when you come through the doors. Might, some of it might be a little bit artificial, but it at least gets you going. So you just come in here and you begin to worship. Let me tell you, everything that we do here, well, all, the, all the teachers back there that, that teach your children, it's not just so that you can worship here. It's to take your children back so that they can worship as well. Our intent is to have a spirit of appreciation for everything that God does in this place week after week. And then when you come in here, we have a band that just doesn't get up there and start playing. They've been here since seven o'clock in the morning, practicing, getting ready. Why? Because gratitude that captures the attention of heaven is a spirit of readiness. It's something you get ready for. You don't feel your way into it. You just say, I know that today it is good to be in the house of the Lord. God's going to move by his power and I want everything that he has for me. And so you get ready for what God wants to do in your life. Oh, God is so good. We just need to have a spirit of gratitude. Let's everybody stand.